This morning, we're going to talk about the purpose of Jesus' incarnation. We, we don't have to deal with the subject, subject itself. We don't gonna, I don't want to touch the incarnation, what happened at that moment, but we're going to see the benefit that brings to us the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Do you, uh, do you want to hear that? Or I can change the subject. <laughs> well, the purpose of Jesus' incarnation is very vital for every one of us, for our own salvation. Because we're going to deal about the reasons behind why Jesus had to come here on earth to live with us for 33 and a half years, to suffer and die. Why is the reason? Why we have to come and suffer? So that's the reason uh, we're going to deal this morning. It's seven purpose in Jesus' incarnation. First of all, to reveal the true character of his father. That was one of the main reasons behind. Through the years since creation, since Adam and Eve was um, deal with that temptation, and Satan overcome them, God's character is, was always on the line, was distorted. Satan make a big picture of a di distorted God character. And the reason Jesus came was to reveal the true character of God. So that's what we're going to deal in the first place. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So, who have a full knowledge of God? Only the Son, Jesus Christ, have the full knowledge of of the Father, because he was in the bosom of him. He was there in, 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 in God. Uh, let me try to, because always these sins turn it off. Let me do this one first. <coughs> no way in business. So, Jesus Christ who was so close with the Father, and we forget to read uh, the, Bible, uh, the, the Bible reading, is, let us read that part first, John chapter uh, 10 and verse 30. So we can have some ground to say why Jesus is, is very close to, to his Father. What uh, John chapter uh, 10 and verse 30 said? I and my father, how many they are? So who have the true authority to come here on earth and reveal God's character? Only Jesus Christ. Only Jesus have that authority. He know really well his father. Who can give us the best picture of us in, in, in front of the, in the community? Our sons. Because our sons are the mirror of us in, in, in the church, in the school, everywhere they go. Our son is the mirror of us. So Jesus Christ in this case was the mirror of God the Father. Let us go now to, uh, to the next verse here. This verse is we have to read with very careful because in this verse here we find that Jesus assumed the role of the Father. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and, 
and is sufficient for us. Jesus who said the verse Jesus said to him. But now look how Jesus changed the wording of this verse. Have I been with you so long and yet you have no know me? Philip, who is talking there now? It's not Jesus. It's the Father. You see, Jesus and the Father are one. And now when Jesus answer the question to Philip, Jesus said, I'm the father. I've been with you so long for almost three years and a half, and yet you doesn't know me, Philip? Who was talking at that very moment? Jesus assumed the role of the father. If you want to read the best paper about Trinity, read Chapter 14 of John is the, best, is the best paper you can read about Trinity or Godhead in chapter 14 of John. Who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus at this very moment in, his, in, in the last part of his ministry, he said, I'm come to reveal my father, his true character. So that's very important for us to understand this verse here. Have I been with you so long and yet you doesn't know me, Philip? Was Jesus was talking here. But Jesus assumed the role of the father. Jesus said, I'm the Father. If you see me, you see the Father. Because the verse just we read before, John, John chapter 10 and verse 30, what said? I and my Father, we are how many? Two or three? Just one. So that's the unity that we have in Jesus Christ. But let me clarify this. Jesus and the Father wasn't Jesus here and the Father is here. There is one that actually was two persons. But in purpose and idea and the mission they have, they are one. How many God we have? One. But in how many form? In three. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And how many God we have? Only one. They, the three of them, they are one in purpose, in mission, and redemption. And among them, they are no jealousy. So that's the reason why they are one. In this case, Jesus said, I'm the Father. I reveal my Father. So that is very important. It's another text here in Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. For it is the God who commands light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our heart to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, who come to reveal the Father to the Gentiles. Jesus. Jesus Christ. So that is very important. In Jesus, when he was here, how he did with people. He ill treated them. Jesus treated his people in those days, in his time, he treated them with kindness, with love. Show the mercy of God. Have compassion of them. Remember in the, in the Sermon of the Mountain, they, they, when Jesus saw, saw the great multitude, they say, he feel compassion on them. So, and the Bible said, in God is love. So, what Satan say about God? That is a dictator, like a dictatorship. Do you ever live in a country where is a, a dictator? Anyone come from those countries? 
I'm one of them. But I have a good time under the dictator. But many people suffer a lot under that dictator there in Chile. They suffer a lot. We cannot ignore that. But Jesus doesn't, doesn't reveal that God is a dictator, a ruler, a person who uh, enjoy and may suffer to others. Jesus come to reveal how much God loved his people. That he was willing to send his son, one of the deity, one of the, uh, one of the being of the Godhead, to come and to live here with us. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the reason why Jesus came to reveal the true character of God. Let us go to the second point. I found this quote from the spirit prophecy. He represents God not as an essence that pervades nature, but as God who has a personality. What Jesus said to Philip, whoever see me, see the Father. Christ was the express image of his father's person, and he came to our world to restore in men God's moral image, in order that men also fallen might through obedience to God's commandment become stamped with the divine image and character adorned with the beauty of divine loveliness. What a beautiful Savior we have. So, there was reason, you find that support that uh, in this statement here that Jesus come to reveal the character of God being acceptable? Can you accept this fact that the first reason why Jesus have to come here on earth? He came to reveal the true character of our heavenly Father. Let us go to the next one. He came to fulfill the divine covenant. God made a promise to the human being. And he need to come. He need to come to fulfill the divine covenant. Why? Why have God have to be done this? Why God have to come to fulfill this promise? If God doesn't fulfill his promise, he will be in the same predicament of Satan. Because Satan is a liar. If God doesn't fulfill his commandment, he, if he doesn't send his son on earth, God is another liar in the world. But God, even though know that his son will be suffer, he was willing to sacrifice his son for our own salvation. And there was a very big predicament in God's life. If by any mistake, if Jesus commits just one of the smallest sin, he will be still there in the grave. Because Satan will claim ownership on Jesus' body. So that was a risky business. To come and to fulfill the covenant. Now I say that. Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promise made to the fathers and that the Gentile might, be, might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. For this reason I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. That's why Jesus came. He became as a servant. In many statements, in many parts of the gospel, Jesus said, I don't come to be served, but to become a servant to all of you. So that is very, very important for us to understand. Jesus does have any other purpose, only to come to fulfill that promise that God made to the men. One day in the future, 
That was the promise was done in the Garden of Eden to Adam. I will send you a liberator. Adam passed away with the sure idea that one of his descendants become that liberator. But Adam passed away with that hope in his head. But never, Adam never see that. We don't see that. But we have the certainty that, that Jesus lived 2,000 years ago, lived for us, died for us, and rescued us. So that is very important for us to understand. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 and 4 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with a very spiritual uh, blessing in the heavenly place in Christ, just as he shoes us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. When will we have been choosing to be saved? Before the foundation of the world. But Jesus, many confused, ah, we are destined to be saved. But salvation can only be achieved if we accept Jesus Christ as we personal Savior. There is no other option. Everyone has the opportunity to be saved. But not everyone accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That makes the big difference between those who will be saved and those not. So that is very important for us. But Jesus came to fulfill the divine covenant. God make a promise and God must be fulfilled that promise no matter what. As I said before, Jesus coming into our earth to live among us was a risky business for God. How much cost salvation? For us is free of charge. For us cost nothing. For us it's very easy. But for God, as I said, was a risky business. God have the, the, um, the risk to lose his son for the rest of the eternity. Think just about that. One of those three beings to be lost forever and ever. That is amazing. And that was how much God loved you. Think for a moment. God ran that risk to lose one of them because they express love for us. That is, uh, sometimes I cannot understand how deep, how broad, how high is God's love for the human being. So we decide by our, our own free will to run away from God. But God chased us. He, he, he ran after us showing his love, showing his mercy, trying to convince us to accept him in order to be saved. So, brothers and sisters, there is no much greater love than God's love for us. Under the new covenant, the condition by which eternal life might be gained are the same under the, as under the old. The conditions are and never have been based on perfect obedience. In the new and better covenant, Christ has fulfilled the law for the transgressor of law. If they receive him by faith as a personal savior, mercy and forgiveness are the reward for all who come to Christ, trusting in his merit to take away their sin. We are cleansed from sin by the blood of Jesus, Christ Jesus, our Savior. Incredible. Jesus' blood make us free. Jesus' blood make us clean. So, that's the reason why Jesus had to come on earth 
to shed his blood on the cross to save us, to cleanse us from all our iniquity in order to be saved. So, brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to understand this purpose of the incarnation, to fulfill the divine covenant. He has to come and shed his blood for us in order to make us clean and to bring in full harmony with God the Father. When I say God the Father, it's a little bit tricky in my mind, and I will explain why. Because when I say God the Father, I just mention one of the beings of the Trinity. But when I say God, I refer to the three of them, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In our salvation, the three of them are involved in it. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three of them working for our salvation. So if Jesus came here on earth, the whole deity was here and working on our favor, and they still are working on our favor. Where is Jesus? In the heaven, heavenly sanctuary. Where is the Holy Spirit? Among us. And where is the Father? In heaven, wishing to us that we become to repentant, repentance. Because say, God doesn't want no one to perish, but everyone to proceed to repentance and salvation, to accept him as his personal savior. Let us go to the next one. The ten on this oneness between God and men is the great covenant of redemption we are arranged with Christ from all the eternity. When this plan of salvation was laid down, when was, say, well, when God, the three beings there, the divine being, <coughs> decide to save the men, when they say, when the men... <coughs> When the men fall there in the, in the Garden of Eden, of this plan of salvation was done long, long before, was done in the eternity. Brothers and sisters, this salvation, this covenant that will bring redemption to the human being was arranged in the eternity long, long time ago. And so, for that reason, we have to praise our Lord Jesus Christ. The covenant of grace is not a new truth, for it existed in the mind of God from all the eternity. This is why it's called the everlasting covenant. How many years exist in God's mind? What did the paragraph from the theory of prophecy said? From the eternity, from all the eternity was this plan of salvation. In case of, we have this plan to rescue the men and save them. So that is why Jesus had to come to fulfill this everlasting covenant. Now, he came to become our substitute. Who deserve to be dead or to die? Us. We deserve to go to the cross. But who took our place? Jesus Christ, our Savior. He takes, say, no. He said to the men, give me your sins. I will carry on to the cross. And I will kneel there at the cross. And I will cover all your sin with my blood. So you will become pure before God's sight. One question. Are you willing to die for other person? It's difficult. It's very difficult to put 
It's like, okay, this person has to die. I'm old. I will die for him. He can live. No human being is willing to that sacrifice. But Jesus, he, he come and he's our substitute. He died for us. Let us read some few verses from the Bible. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45 said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. For how many Jesus gave his life? Only for one, only for Adam? For everyone. So John chapter uh, 3 and verse 16 say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him might not perish, might have everlasting life. So, to give the ransom for many, that is open the heaven for us. Because through Jesus, we can claim salvation through, through the merit of Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the perfect Savior because he bore our sin to the cross. He rescued us. He was ready and willing to pay our ransom. No one by his own merit we cannot gain salvation. As good as much as you, you might be, but that is not enough to gain salvation at God's side. You need the help of Jesus. You need the help of an advocate or a solicitor if you can put it, or, or a lawyer. Jesus is our lawyer at God's side. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to say, what? That was lost. You know, one of the, the animal doesn't have a sense of orientation is the sheep. If you left the sheep, in, the sheep in the middle of the street, she doesn't have idea where she might go. You can leave your dogs there, and he will find your place. He will return to your house. But if you left a sheep there, he will never, ever found his place unless you go and grab it and take them home. That is our case. We've been lost, but we does not know how to return to God. So that's why Jesus had to come to rescue us and put again in harmony with God the Father because we does not know how to go back to him. We're completely lost. So that for that reason, Jesus is our substitute. Jesus has to come and take us into the path of God. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 12 say, Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside in the, gate, the gate. So, he came and he sanctified us by his blood. What, what is it the call from God? Be holy because I am holy. So only through the blood of Jesus we can achieve holiness in our life. Because God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Father is, they are working in our favor. They want us to be holy because without holiness oh, we cannot see God. So my brothers, that is the reason why we need the blood of Jesus upon ourselves. Because without the blood of Jesus we cannot achieve sanctity or holiness. So is it is important the blood of Jesus in our in the our, in the plan of salvation. It is. It's very, very, very important. 
How is God reconciled to men? By the work and merit of Jesus Christ, who put aside everything that would interpose between men and God, pardoning love. The law that man has transgressed is not changed to meet the sinner in his fallen condition, but is made manifest as the transcript of Jehovah's character, the exponent of his holy will. Yet, a way of salvation is provided for the spotless Lamb of God is revealed as the one who taketh away the sin of the world. So, that is very important for us. So, the, we, how we can be reconciled with God? Only to the merit, through the merit of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus is standing in the sinner's place and take the guilt of the transgressors upon himself. For God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. So that is very important that Jesus stand in the sinner's play. He took our play. He was taken to the cross. And he died for us and died and rescued us and saved us. So that is very, very important. So until now we see the, the purpose of, re, of the incarnation, to reveal the true character of his father, to, to come, he came to fulfill the divine covenant, and he became our substitute. And now let us go to another one. It's very important also. He became our high priest. Do we need his, ter- his service as a high priest? Yes, we do. What Jesus is doing in the heavenly sanctuary, he's acting in our behalf. He's acting in our behalf. So that is the reason why he's our high priest. And let us read some few verses from uh, Hebrew. Therefore, in all sin he have to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertain, pertaining to God to make propitiation for sin of the people. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted. He is able to hide those who are tempted. So, this high priest, here we have to be careful with one word. That word is this one, like. Therefore, in all sin have to be made like his brethren. What do you understand by the word, word like? And one question, is Jesus equal to us? How many of you, how do you understand this word? Jesus was made similar to us. Jesus is equal to us in our human infirmity. He suffered from a tiredness. He felt he was thirsty. He needed to sleep. In all our, that human condition, he's like us. But in the spiritual sense, Jesus is similar to us. Because as we're going to read the next uh, verse... Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but who was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus is the sinless son of man. Can we be a sinless? Are we a sinless right now? No, that is what makes the difference between Jesus and us. That is to make the big difference because the the word before, before is this one, is similar to. That's what uh, 
we can understand that word, and that word comes from the Greek word homoioma, which means similar to. But when Paul refers that Jesus is, this, is equal to God, he used the word isos, that means equal to God in nature and everything. So that, we, that word is a little bit tricky and could cause a lot of confusion. Jesus was become priest and victim. The infinite sufficient of Christ demonstrated by his daring to the sin of the world. He occupied the double position, the offerer and the offering of priest and of victim. Who died on the cross? Jesus Christ. Who took the blood? Jesus. So, my brothers and my sisters, we have the perfect high priest who was offered once and for all. No light in the old system in the sanctuary of Israel where every year they have to present a sacrifice. Some is daily vices and the other on the Yom Kippur, on, on the Day of Atonement. Every year, God, the, the priests have to do that service. But Jesus come for once and for all. He was offering as the victim of the Lamb of God. He was killed. He shed his blood. And now we can save and we can claim and shout, praise our Jesus Christ. Because he was the victim, but he's also the priest. And he's working in our favor. Christ's priestly intercession is now going in the sanctuary about in our behalf. This sacrifice made him abundantly able to save to the uttermost of all that come unto God by him, seeing he lived to make intercession for them. So that is why it's so important for us to have this high priest because he's working in our favor. To undone the devil work. Let us let us let why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a mirror from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own research. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Jesus is declaring here in this particular verse that the devil is a liar. Whatever the devil is telling you, he is Allah is lying. Because he lied from the beginning. And when he lied, he speaks from his own uh, material, from his own uh, book. But Jesus said very plainly, the devil is a liar. He is very emphatic and very right to the point. He make a killer blow to the devil, declaring him, you are a liar. And he revealed the true character of the devil. All those sins that the devil claimed that God was, was an unmerciful, was unloving, he spoke of himself. Because the devil is like that. The devil doesn't, doesn't love no one. The devil wants every one of us will be perish. But God said, he doesn't want no one perish, but everyone proceed to the full repentance and to be saved. So, who is better, God or the devil? For, for sure, God is much, 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 much better than the devil because God is offer us salvation through the merit of Jesus Christ. 
the devil has tried to carry us into perdition to be lost forever and ever. This is very uh, powerful uh, statement. He who sinned is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil. What happened? Why Jesus Christ had to come? To destroy the work of the devil. So, but here we have to be very, here uh, we have to be careful in this part here. Sometimes we run off the truck. When we are doing this, we are, we are putting in a dangerous ground. And the devil can strike that right there and we will be lost forever and ever. When we commit sin, we go on this, at the side of the devil. So that's the reason why God says we have to always stand by the truth and always seek his companion. The purity and holiness of Christ, the spotless righteousness of him who did not sin was a perpetual reproach upon all sin in a well of sensuality and sin. In his life, the life of truth was flashed amid the moral darkness with which Satan enshrouded the world. Christ exposed the falsehood and deceiving character and in many hearts destroyed his corrupting influence. It is was this that stirred Satan such intense hatred. So, this paragraph or this statement doesn't need to be another uh, commented or another explanation. It's very clear. It's right to the point. One of one whose character and practice refute Satan's misrepresentation of God. Satan had charged upon God the attribute he himself possessed. Now in Christ he saw God reveal his true character, a compassionate, merciful father, no willing that anyone, any should perish, but all shall should come to him in repentance and have eternal life. Go to the next one. I have to run fast now. To set an example for us. He who say he abide in him, of him said also to walk just as he walk. If we call Christian, how we have to call, how we have to behave? Christ lies. Exactly. We have to uh, act like God. I cannot walk and I cannot assume a name if I don't do what my leaders did. If I call myself Christian, I have to do what Jesus did. I have to follow his footstep. I have to do everything according to his will if I call myself Christian. I have to rush a little bit because we're beyond the time. Christ is our example. The Christian warfare is not a life of indulgence to eat and drink and dress a self-indulgent worldly. The Lord Jesus came in human nature to our world to give his precious life as an example of what our life should be. Is clear? It's clear? It's very clear. We are to follow the example set by Christ and make him our pattern until we shall have the same love for others as he has manifested for us. Let us go to the next and the last step. 
to prepare the second coming. How many of you, you want that Jesus come today? How many of you want to go to heaven? All right. Amen. I want to be there too. Jesus come to prepare the second coming. Because that day will be a very, very special day. Was, we will, will be a very noisy day. Because the grave will be open. Shouting. The angel claim. We are going to rise up and, and, and praise the Lord. Here this is the Lord we are waiting for so long. That day will be a full day of joy. So Christ was offered once to bear the sin of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. He will appear for the second time. Why? Because he said, I will come back again. I will come in again. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Do you want Jesus to come again? And he received you to myself, that where I am, there you might be also. So wherever Jesus might be in heaven, I'll be there with him. That is the most rewarding experience for any Christian. To be at the side of Jesus Christ. We also say, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in the like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Jesus said to us, I will come again. But we have the confirmation again. Jesus' work was confirmed by these two powerful angels who said to the men who was gazing up heaven, the same Jesus that was taken from you he will come again. I hope to be there in that day. God people are to warn the world to prepare for the second appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is our responsibility. That is our purpose in life. To share the gospel of Jesus. To share Jesus. But many say, ah, but pastor, uh, I don't know how to give Bible study. I never do a theological course. You don't need to, give a, uh, you don't need to know how to give a Bible study. You don't need to go to Abondel to, give, to, to speak about Jesus. If you keep an intelligent conversation, talking with your friend, you can share Jesus. That's rich, preaching and reaching out with the gospel is to share what Jesus has in my life. How powerful he led my life. That's what I need to share with others. That's what other people need to know. How Jesus led my life from triumph to triumph. So that's what is need to be shared. And the second opinion of our, our, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is to be kept fresh before the mind of the people. The same Jesus that ascended into heaven, escorted by heavenly hosts, is coming again. And I longing for that day. I want to see that day. And I want to be an account between those who will who we wait in our Lord Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, that is, here are the seven uh, purpose of, uh, of incarnation. It's my sincere wish that we can learn 
about the true purpose of incarnation. As we see the mo this morning, there is a purpose of the incarnation. We don't study the subject itself of the incarnation, what happened, what was involved, what happened with the human nature, what happened with the divine nature. We don't, uh, I don't attempt to, to, uh, to, to deal with that issue. But the purpose behind of incarnation, that is very important for us. And I want that God can open your mind and study this subject because that will be very fruitful and blessed for yourself. God bless you all. Sometimes it's much easier to speak in Spanish. 